Hello, this is Jan from JC WebTech. I create videos with tips and tricks for Elementor and web design in general. And today I will show you how to create uh, this neat mobile slider. Uh, some people call it, I think, uh, Airbnb style slider or Netflix slider, basically with one, uh, the second slide uh, partly showing on mobile to kind of give you the hint that there are more things to to slide through, which I think it's a very nice uh, UX UI practice because uh, it's much better than viewing the default one uh, slide and kind of only understanding that there is more to see just thanks to some dots that in this case you can completely uh, get rid of them. Uh, and we are going to do this uh, for uh, uh, any slider in Elementor, also for slider created by Jet uh, Engine and uh, slider created by uh, custom skin, LA custom skin plugin. Uh, so it's pretty much all the all the ways how you would normally create uh, a slider in Elementor. We will cover them. You can see that we'll be able to see the timestamps in the description uh, if you want to skip to some particular one but i recommend you viewing i recommend you seeing the whole video because uh, well it helps the algorithm but uh, also i may be mentioning something in some part it will also apply to some other part uh, so yeah so let's dive right uh, into it okay so i have uh, two sliders on this page and I will it, and I do have the code in this HTML block right next to it. I recommend you don't do that. Uh, I have it just for to be quicker in this tutorial and when I was writing the code to kind of debug it in one window. But I would uh, highly recommend you to uh, to use uh, the Elementor custom code, for example, or some plugin if you don't have the pro version and then uh, uh, creating it here and uh, selecting the option to put it in the end of the body and maybe give it some lower priority so it doesn't uh, blow your website. Uh, anyway, now we have it here uh, and let me just get rid of it uh, for this one. So this one here is, the, is for the jet engine slider and it is different because Jet Engine is still using slick slider library that Elementor was using in some until some version like 2.5 and Jet Engine is still using it. I don't really know for what reason they didn't migrate to Swiper that is natively used by Elementor because it kind of doesn't make sense to load two libraries in case you are using also the Elementor default slider somewhere. You are loading two libraries that are doing the same thing. So uh, Crocoblox, if you are watching this, please. Thank you. Otherwise you are amazing. And uh, so yeah, so let me get rid of this, uh, this script so that we see where we where we started and also let me this is the this is a slider that is uh, made with the testimonial carousel block and by the way this, this should also work in the future if Elementor rolls out its own custom loop with uh, uh, which should probably have also the option to create a slider just like Jet Engine does because it's kind of already in Elementor, so there's no reason for them not to include it when they finally roll this out. And I believe it will be the feature that will be coming after the container, hopefully. So it this this whole tutorial will very likely work for it. And if not, so if there is some change, I will I will put it in the description. So I have the code for this carousel here. So let me also get rid of it. Uh, I will update. Basically, you don't you don't see the what the code does. You don't see it on the editor because you need to refresh the website to to see it. So it's only seen on the front end. So let's see the changes on the on the live or on the front end of the website. So here we have this uh, carousel 
that's the jet engine one i can see it's a little bit to the side because it's one tweak that i had to do uh to like the default in within elementor uh, which was on mobile to move it a little bit to left so that it's uh, well aligned it was not aligning well but it's easy and some maybe in your case you will be doing a little bit uh, different tweak but that's that's all i did and also obviously we need to have uh, the full width content the, the wrapping element of the carousel needs to be full width so that it's like appearing and disappearing to the edges of the uh, of the screen on mobile while on uh, on uh, uh, on a desktop we don't really want that so on desktop we have it within the container uh so this one we are looking at so it we have it within a container but on mobile we want to have it side to side so that's why it's now covering the whole view and uh and doesn't look all that good but it because uh when we when we add this code to it let me just show you also the second slider it's this one it's also side to side so this is the starting point and so uh, yeah now let me let me just uh, put back the code and i will briefly explain you uh what it does so that in case uh, you need to troubleshoot it a little or adapt it to your use case uh, you can very easily do it so uh here we are at the chat engine so we need the one that I removed first, yes. Uh, so this is uh, this is the code. Let me make it bigger. It's easier to easier to read like this. So basically, what this code does, it's waiting for the window to load. And then uh, uh, important one important thing that I skipped is that you need to assign uh, a class, a custom class to the uh to the carousel element i'm using the classes carousel you can put something something else there uh, but then you need to use the same keyword in the code to refer to the to the slider so that basically if you have multiple ones you know that the the browser understands that you are referring to this one so this is why there is classes carousel it needs to be the same like i just showed you uh, and slick uh, slider is there by default because we are referring to it's in, it's a class injected by by uh, jet engine there so, so we grab the slick slider uh, and we refer to the uh, slick slider option and we are going to modify them so for the normal wide view we are leaving we are sticking with three slides and center mode is uh, not uh, activated. Center mode means that uh, that the active uh, slide will be in the center, not on the side, but in the center. It will help us achieve this achieve this look on mobile that we are going after. But we, for a uh, desktop, we don't want it because uh, it would stay on desktop. Uh, it would stay in the middle. We wouldn't see we wouldn't see this uh, slide. This one, the first one, the active one would be in the middle and only when sliding, they would be coming more into view. So that's why it's uh, disabled on desktop, but, but then we set the breakpoints, uh, which uh, here for a laptop, it means uh, below 1024 pixels of width. Uh, we set it to show 2.5 uh, of the slide. So we will already have this uh part of the slide hidden hinting that you need to slide more and uh on mobile we will be showing just the 1.05 of a uh, of a slide it will give us this uh little corner of the next uh slide showing and uh that's it so this is for slick uh for the for the jet engine carousel and in case uh, you are doing you want to do this uh, edit to like the any uh, elementor widget it will be using the swiper library 
So I will put this code here, back here. So it will be this one. So here the idea is very similar. And uh, so we are again uh, waiting for the window to load. Here we are making sure that the swiper already initialized and it's, uh, it's already uh, running in the browser because Elementor fortunately is doing at least some tweaks. Uh, now to the builder and it's uh, loading the by default it's loading the swiper library uh, with some delay so we need to kind of make sure it's already loaded before we start to modify the carousel so this, that's basically what's happening here when it's loaded we take the again the class that we assign to the to the carousel and carousel wrapper it's uh, here mobile slider so we are referring to that, that one, uh, mobile slider swiper container. That's there. This class is there by default. Like by this, we re refer to it by this code. And here we can we modify it. So what we are doing here that we go to the to the breakpoint to the first breakpoint. That's index zero, but it's the first breakpoint. So it's the mobile breakpoint. Normally it's the seven uh, six uh, uh, something. Uh, so you set this, uh, you modify this settings for the first breakpoint to sh show 1.2 slides per view, and the rest stays the same from what you, what you set up in, uh, what you set up in uh, Elementor. So you have these options here, and you can. I don't know if some of them are responsive. Uh, seems like not. But everything else will stay the same that you said here. Uh, you can, yeah, you can here. Uh, you can here. Here you can set the number of slides per view for mobile and uh, tablet and desktop. But here we are in the code. We are overriding that because unfortunately, for some reason, Elementor doesn't give you the option to. To set uh, like not uh, not integer value for it while swiper supports it so unfortunately like we could have been modifying these parameters uh, from here already but uh, elementor doesn't give us this option so that's why we need the the code and we will modify that we don't want one we don't want two but we want to see 1.2 or 1.3 of the slide so again we have the the center mode here active uh, so that the first slide is centered and then we see part of it part of the next one instead of seeing like part of uh, one on each side uh, and this is the this is the important part of the code and then uh, the rest basically uh, makes sure that it's uh, updated so we reinitialize the uh, the carousel Basically, it means like the that uh, the the element is updated with this uh, with these new parameters, and you can here you can input more things. You can continue. You can put uh, here new line with swiper instance uh, params breakpoint dot or params dot, and um, you can you can check out the swiper API. And there are more things, much more things that you can modify, so you can play with that. Uh, and yeah, also the the worst thing that can happen if this breaks at some point uh, is that uh, it will revert to the default that you set in uh, Elementor. Like your website is not going to break; it will just this partic part of the thing will not work. So it's nice, not, not big risk uh, using this code. Uh, so yeah, so and I updated like. Uh, I inputted this code that you will be able to copy, copy paste, uh, and uh, let me wait to, for it to refresh. So where do I have this one? So on on desktop, this is the jet engine created carousel. It's on desktop. It's like normal. You could also create. You could also implement it in the way that it will be also on desktop, like this uh, edge to edge. And for this case, I didn't. I didn't want to. And for me, it makes mostly sense on mobile. Here, you cannot even say that it's a 
really it's a slider because we only have three slides in this one but then the, the magic happens when we go to mobile uh, let me make sure let me better refresh it so here we have the it's the jet engine one yeah uh, it's uh, nice and neat and makes just makes sense this is like the first slide and you are going to see more and uh, yeah this is the swiper the uh, the uh, elementor native native slider it's here so yeah and, and if you are using uh, LA custom skin pro and their carousel you need to use uh, another version of this uh, code that I will also provide the in the description because it is initialized slightly differently so you need to use the promise uh, way of referring to the uh, swiper which is something slightly advanced basically what it does is uh, is uh, loads it asynchronously so instead of uh, saying uh, like we are doing here the difference is that instead of swiper equal to this and then then using this variable directly we need to use it in a callback function because it is a little bit more sophisticated way of uh, calling it because it doesn't have to happen immediately it's like if you sometimes eventually see like some something some result of your javascript is a promise is because it's using this this way um, where it waits until this value is uh, processed and outputted by JavaScript instead of blocking and waiting for it so that the code continues. Normally the code continues and if you really depend on the value that you are uh, waiting for from this function you need to do it and to say like that when this function is processed let's do this. So that's what this code is doing but basically you don't need to modify it you will need to only modify these uh, values that and the idea then is uh, completely identical here yeah this is and this is it like for, it was uh, a little bit longer tutorial again because i wanted to explain everything uh, so that you are able to to modify it and adjust it to your use case but basically only thing that you need to do is create your design uh, copy paste the code tweak some uh, little positioning or whatever you may you may need and you are good to go with this uh, well, modern mobile friendly slider and uh, you will have a website that is more user friendly and uh, less of uh, elementor default so hope you enjoyed this uh, this tutorial uh, like and subscribe and I see you in the next one.